that broke my heart. I really didn't want to kick anybody out. I've never... I didn't want to be a bouncer. First of all, I'm like five foot small something. Like, I don't, like... You just have to build a fire. Which one can Some coal for the way home. Oh, it's coal everywhere now. Get some milk. <laughs> the coal just keeps falling. Okay, let's go home. So I... <laughs> that means an excuse to make a fire. Okay, um... So I'm... So I didn't want to kick anybody out, and, um, it just broke my heart. I just, after I did it, I, I told him they had to leave, and then I went back home. Like, I didn't even, I'm not, I'm not gonna, like, wait there. And, and then, um, I think I was actually planning on leaving, and I just waited in my house. Because <laughs> I didn't even want to see if they were there or not. <laughs> I didn't want to follow up. And then, um, when I did leave, eventually, I, like, didn't look. And I, I think I didn't follow up. I, maybe I did? I don't even remember. So embarrassing. Nothing makes you feel like 95 years old, like, kicking somebody off the property. <laughs> I did do it at work once, but my boss and my manager were there, so they did it. It was, like, a closed public garden. It, we were, um... Now, there's really a reason to get the coal. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's called public garden, and they they were having like a picnic on a blanket, like it's a couple, it's really young couple. <laughs> like, how'd you get in here? <laughs> You have to leave. <laughs> There's something so weird about that interaction. Like, they were so, like, eerily... Like, it was almost as if they were having the biggest panic attack in the world, and their face, they just did, like... Like this with their faces. <laughs> and, um, tried to have, like, um, a glimmer of, like, romance in their eyes. Like, it was just like, really weird. They're probably afraid we were gonna call the cops or something. That's, like, not, that's, like, the opposite of performance art. That's why it's important to know what funny is. Like funny would have been um, if you were a volunteer and you like prank called my boss and were like pretending to be really confused and like, is the garden open yet? <laughs> Oh, I think you need one more part, right? And then they're like, no, the garden's not open yet. Need one more piece. And then, <laughs> and then you call back um, the next day, and then the next day, <laughs> and then the next day. You just keep asking if the garden is open. <laughs> okay. That's funny. And then they find it, then, and then like, they probably know right away who it is. <laughs> but like literally going there, um, I'm like, nah, nah, that's not funny. Cause I mean, kicking someone out, kicking someone out sucks. So you don't want to make people do that. It gives them like a panic attack. It makes them feel really violated and scared and like, it's uncool. My fireplace, this room could use a little warmth from time to time. From time to time. Let's do this. Make a fire. Okay, so we don't have any lapis lazuli for a blue fire. We don't have any sulfur for a snowy fire. I wonder how we get that because I haven't found any yet. Maybe it just happens over time. 
regular fire, coal, you need five pieces of coal and we have 60. So how many fires can we make? Ooh! Can I make another fire over it? <laughs> I think we should make a fire. The warmth of the fire makes life underground even more pleasant. That's nice. Oh, you can't make another fire. Move so we can see what it looks like. Ooh. Victory! Can we reuse the flints? I'm sure we can reuse the flints. It's a freaking rock. Let's sit and stare for a little while. Yeah, flint. Flint is uh, a piece of rock, and if you have two pieces, you go like this. You knock them together, and then the spark comes out. And Or so the legend goes. Okay. <laughs> That's nice. It's a little smaller than I expected. That's very cute. Did anyone else think it was going to be like, like that big? I guess there's like an outline of, on the stone of like how big it could be. <laughs> I have one disappointment. <laughs> no, I'm not disappointed. Well, we have a little extra time today. Maybe we should be the whole goose girl. This is where uh, she's betrothed, right? And then the mom does something weird and tells her to take the handkerchief with her. Okay. Okay, so they took a sorrowful leave of each other. The princess put a piece of cloth in her bosom, mounted her horse, and then went away to her bridegroom. After she had ridden for a while, she felt a burning thirst. Okay, and sent her waiting maid. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Black people already don't like this book. Dismount and take my cup with thou, which thou hast, hast brought with thee for me. And black people, saying black people is apparently less racist than saying African American. Dismount and take my cup, which thou hast brought me with thee for me, and get me some water from the stream, for I should like to drink. If you are thirsty, said the waiting maid, get off your horse yourself, nice, and lie down and drink out of the water. I don't choose to be your servant. That's weird, though, because it seems like she was hired. But, you know, she's uh, she's not having it. Maybe it's because the mom is gone, because um, the princess is on a journey. And uh, so she goes rogue. She goes rogue. She says, I'm, uh, I'm not doing it anymore. So in her great thirst, the princess alighted, bent down over the water in the stream and drank. And was not allowed to drink out of the golden cup. That's weird. Like mystically or like it broke. Then she said, ah, heaven. And the three drops of blood answered, okay, if thy mother knew this, her heart would break. Is that true though? The mom seems a little nutty. Or is that cultural differences? But the king's daughter was humbled said nothing, and mounted her horse again. She rode some miles further, but the day was warm. The sun scorched her, and she was thirsty once more, and when they came to a stream of water, she again cried to her waiting maid, Dismount and give me some water in my golden cup, for she had long ago forgotten the girl's ill words. But the waiting maid said still more haughtily, If you wish to drink, drink as you can. I don't choose to be your maid. Uh, apparently she's not fired, because uh, the princess is goldfish. <laughs> She'll go back on the clock. Then in her great thirst, the king's daughter alighted, bent over the flowing stream, wept, and said, Ah, heaven! And the drops of blood again replied, I guess she's pretty thirsty. Because she's going crazy. If thy mother knew this, her heart would break. 
And as she was thus drinking and leaning over the stream, the handkerchief with three drops of blood fell out of her bosom and floated away with the water without her observing it. So great was her trouble. So she lost she lost the, uh, the napkin. The waiting maid, however, had seen it, and she rejoiced to think that she now had power over the bride. For since the princess had lost the drops of blood, she had become weak and powerless. So I guess her mom's like, she's all that. So now, when she wanted to mount her horse again, the one that was called Falada, or the talking horse, the waiting maid said, Falada is more suitable for me, and my nag will do for thee. I guess nag of a horse. And the princess had to be content with that. Then the waiting maid, with so many hard words, bade the princess exchange her royal apparel for her own shabby clothes. Uh-oh. She just got, like, cinderella Uh, you know, like when, uh, at the ball when she gets, like, disheveled by her sisters, evil stepsisters. And at length, <laughs> she was compelled to swear by the clear sky above her that she would not say one word of this to anyone at the world court. And if, oh, is she going to go to the betrothed? And if she had not taken this oath, she would have been killed on the spot. That marriage switch up would just break my heart. But, you know, we don't know a lot about these characters, so maybe the... We don't know if the maid is like mistreated. Maybe she's, maybe she's a Cinderella type, and maybe we would all love to see her get married to the prince. But Falada saw all this and observed it well. So maybe the horse here represents the judge, uh, the more impartial party. But Falada saw all this and observed it well. The waiting maid now mounted Falada, and the true bride, the bad horse, there's no such thing as a bad horse, and thus they traveled onwards, the horse quarrels will know more than me about that, until at length they entered the royal palace. There were great rejoicings over her arrival, and the prince sprang forward to meet her, lifted the waiting maid from her horse, and thought she was his consort. She was conducted upstairs, but the real princess was left standing below. And then the old king looked out of the window and saw her standing in the courtyard, and how dainty and delicate and beautiful she was. Okay, so we, he goes, mm, we don't know about the maid now. And instantly went to the, maybe the, uh, maybe the princess is black. Went to the royal apartment and asked the bride about the girl she had with her who was standing down below in the courtyard, and who she was. I picked her up on my way for a companion. Give the girl something to work at, that she may not stand idle. But the old king had no work for her, and knew of none, He's probably just saying that this man's world. So he's obviously there's work to do. So he said, I have a little boy who tends the geese. She may help him. The boy was called Conrad. That's a nice weed to name. And the true bride had to help him to tend the geese. Soon afterwards, the false bride said to the young king, calling her the false bride kind of makes her seem like an evil villain. Um, but, you know, I like to keep an open mind said to the young king, Dearest husband, I beg you to do me a favor. He answered, I will do so most willingly. Willingly. Then send for the knacker and have the head of the horse on which I rode here cut off for it vexed me on the way. Okay! Animal cruelty, not okay. Peta is angry. In reality, she was afraid that the horse might tell how she had behaved to the king's daughter. Then she succeeded in making the king promise that it should be done. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, because it's a man's world. And the faithful... He's going to make a fake one and bring it to her. And the faithful Falada was to die. This came to the ears of the real princess, and she secretly promised to pay the knacker a piece of gold if he would perform a small... She only has gold. Would perform a small service for her. There was... Oh, maybe she's lying. There was a great dark-looking gateway in town through which morning and evening she she had to pass with the geese. Would he be so good as to nail up Falada's head on it so that she might see him once again more than once? The knacker's man promised to do that and cut off the head